Hi there, and welcome to this day in history, November 5th. November 5th is the 309th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, which we observe, with 56 days remaining to the end of the year. It'll be here before you know it. Today we're going to start in the year 1605 with the so-called gunpowder plot when Guy Fawkes was arrested. Early that morning, King James learned that there had been a plot to blow up the Parliament building, but that it had been foiled or averted hours before he was scheduled to sit with the rest of the British government in a general parliamentary session. Other information tells me that this is Guy Fawkes Day or Bonfire Night in the United Kingdom in uh, a commemoration of the failure <laughs> to blow up the British government. Apparently Roman Catholics were angry with the government and wanted to clear the way for a new era of Catholicism in England. Someone tipped off the authorities, and one of the conspirators, Guy Fawkes, was caught red-handed stashing explosives in the cellar on the night before the planned attack. He was tortured for a confession, tried and convicted, and then executed for treason, along with any other conspirators who weren't killed when they resisted arrest. The first observation of Guy Fawkes, imagine naming a holiday after the villain, Guy Fawkes Day took place that same year when bonfires were lit to celebrate the safety of the king, and it has been going on ever since. This day in 1857 is the birthday of Ida Tarbell, American journalist, author, reformer, and educator, and investigative journalist, biographer, and lecturer. She was one of the leading muckrakers of the progressive era of the late 19th and early 20th centuries and pioneered investigative journalism. Born in Pennsylvania at the onset of the oil boom, Tarbell is best known for her 1904 book, The History of the Standard Oil Company. She died Died in January of 1944 at the age of 86. In 1862, President Lincoln removed General McClellan from the Army of the Potomac. In 1872, some women's suffrage news. In defiance of law, suffragist Susan B. Anthony voted for the first time and was later fined $100 for it. Hoping that the U.S. Supreme Court would rule that women had a constitutional right to vote, suffragists made several attempts to vote in the early 1870s and then filed lawsuits when they were turned away. Anthony actually succeeded in voting in 1872 but was arrested for that act and found guilty in a widely publicized trial that gave the movement fresh momentum. Now here was something I certainly didn't know before. I mean, every day I read things that I didn't know before, but this is really something I didn't know before. And that is that in 1895, George B. Selden was granted the first U.S. patent for an automobile. He was a patent lawyer and inventor who was, indeed, granted a patent for an automobile in 1895. In 1912, Woodrow Wilson was elected the 28th President of the United States, defeating the incumbent William Howard Taft. In 1913, the actress Vivian Lee was born. She died in 1967. And from 1913, we're going to jump all the way up to 1931, when Ike Turner was born, singer-songwriter, guitarist, producer, husband to Tina Turner. He died in 2007. In 1940, Franklin D. Roosevelt was re-elected for an unprecedented third term as President of the United States. He broke a long-held precedent that began with George Washington when he became the first president elected to a third term. He would go on then to vie for and win yet a fourth term, taking office for the last time on January 20th, 1945. Relative to that fourth term, he effectively quelled rumors of his poor health during the campaign, but his health was in reality deteriorating. In fact, on April 12, 1945, only 82 days after his fourth inauguration, he suffered a cerebral hemorrhage, which I believe is the fancy name for a stroke, and died. When the House and Senate flipped red at the next midterm, they got right to work on term limits. And two years after FDR's death, Congress passed the 22nd Amendment, limiting presidents to two terms. In 1940, the beautiful German actress Elke Sommer was born. 
she turned 79 today. This day in 1941 is the birthday of Art Garfunkel, American singer, songwriter, and guitarist, and the Garfunkel of Simon and Garfunkel. On November 5, 1941, the order was given to bomb Pearl Harbor. The combined Japanese fleet received top secret order number one that in 34 days' time, Pearl Harbor was to be bombed along with Mayala, the Dutch Indies, and the Philippines. On this day in 1949, a fellow named Jimmy Spheris, American singer-songwriter, primarily composed on the guitar and piano. His musical genre was generally in the folk music and singer-songwriter traditions, although later work explored jazz rock music, jazz rock fusion, and new wave music. He died in July of 1984. On this day in 1955, the Vienna State Opera reopened after having been destroyed in World War II and then rebuilt. They reopened with a performance of Beethoven's Fidelio. On this day in 1968, Richard Nixon was elected the 37th President of the United States. He defeated Vice President Hubert Humphrey. Because of the strong showing of third-party candidate George Wallace, neither Nixon nor Humphrey received more than 50% of the popular vote, and Nixon beat Humphrey by less than 500,000 votes. On this day in 1977, George W. Bush married Laura Welch in Midland, Texas. On November 5, 1994, George Foreman became the oldest heavyweight champ at age 45. He defeated 26-year-old Michael Moorer in the 10th round of their WBA fight in Las Vegas. More than 12,000 spectators at the MGM Grand Hotel watched Foreman dethrone Moorer, who went into the fight with a 35-0 record. Foreman dedicated his upset win to all my buddies in the nursing home and all the guys in jail. <laughs> On November 5, 2007, Google unveiled the Android mobile operating system. Also on November 5, 2007, Writer's Strike stalled production of TV shows and movies. On November 5, 2013, India launches the Mars Orbiter mission, its first interplanetary probe. And that's going to wrap it up for us today. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And feel free to share this video if you found it interesting or informative. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. All right, let's try this again. Blah, 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 coffee mug. <laughs> Hello, kitty. <laughs> On this day, we have a lot of creative birthdays, uh, a lot of creative birthdays today. I mean, are there really that many creative people in the world that they populate the birthdays every day? There's a lot of them. A lot of creative birthdays today. On this the 37th. <laughs> Is that right? I would have thought it had been longer ago than that. Well, there you go. Was that the same year? Okay. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? Did not a man. Sure would be nice if I could ever read one of these in its entirety without having to start anything over. That would be awesome. I might have to take another look at that. I'm going to have to look at that. Oh, better take a look at that. This is why I don't do live shows. <laughs>